Congratulations, you've accepted to listen to the my voice recording of Alan Poe's The Raven. Once upon a midnight's dreary, while I pondered weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as some one gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. "'Tis some visitor,' I muttered, tapping at my chamber door, only this and nothing more. Ah, distinctly I remember, it was a bleak December, and each separate dying ember thought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow, vainly I sought borrow, from the books this creased of sorrow, so for the lost Lenore, for the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore, nameless here for evermore. And silken sad unseen rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never f- felt before. So now, to still be beating, my heart stood, I stood repeating, "'Tis some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door, some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. This is it and nothing more. Presently, my soul grew stronger, hesitantly then no longer. "'Sir!' said I, or madam, truly your forgiveness I implore, but the fact is I was napping, so gently you came rapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door, that I scare was sure I heard you, here I open wide the door. Deep into the darkness, peering, stood I stood there, wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming, no mortal ever dared dream to dream before, and the silence was unbroken, and the stillness gave no token, and the only word there spoken was the whisper word, Lenore. This I whispered, and an echo murmured back the word, Lenore. Merely this and nothing more, back into the chamber turning, my soul within me burning. Soon again I hear a tapping somewhat louder than before. Surely, said I, surely there is something at my window, Lason. Let me see then what threat is this mystery explore let my heart be still a moment and then this mystery explore tis the wind and nothing more open here i flung the shutter when with many a flirt and flutter in stepped a stately raven from the saintly days of yore not the least obedience made he not a minute he stopped or stayed he but with mime or lord or lady perched above my chamber door perched above the bust of palace just above my chamber door perched and sat and nothing more this uh, this then this um, b- bird b- ogling my sad fancy into smiling by the grave and stern decorum of the contents it wore that Though my crest be shorn and shaven, thou, I said, art sure no craven, ghastly grim and ancient raven, wandering from the nightly shore. Tell me what thy lordly name is on the nice platoni shore, quoth the raven. Nevermore. Much I marvelled. I marvelled the ungainly fell to hear discourse so painfully. Through its answer, little meaning, little reverency bore. For we cannot help agreeing that no living being ever er yet was blessed with seeing a bird above his chamber door bird or breast upon the sculpted bust above his chamber door with such a name as nevermore but the raven sitting lonely on the palace bust spoke only that word as if his soul in the that word w- did not abhor nothing further than he uttered not a feather then he fluttered tis a scaly more than muttered other friends have flown before on the moral he lived me Leave me as my hopes have flown before. Then the bird said, Nevermore. Startled at the stillness, broken by the reply, so applying spoken doubtless, said I, what it utters is only the stock and store, caught from the unhappy master of whom unmercifully disaster, followed and fast and followed faster, tis this his song one burden bore, till the dignance of hope the melodic burden bore of Nevermore. But the raven still beguiling my sad fancy into smiling, straight I wheeled a cushion seat in front of the bird and the bust and the door. Then upon a velvet sinking I betook myself to linking fancy unto fancy, thinking what the ominous bird of yore was this grim, ungainly, ghastly got of this anomalous bird of yore, meant in croaking nevermore. This I sat in guessing, but no sim impressing to the fell whose fiercely eyes were burning into the my blossom's core this and more and i sat diving my head under the unseen reclining of my cushioned velvet lining and the lap like growth loading but whose velvet velvet lining and the lamp lowering shall 
she shall press ah never more. Then methought the air grew denser, perfumed from an unseen censer, swung by Sephim, whose foot f- falls tinkled on the truffled floor. Wretch, I cried, thy God hath lent thee, by the angels hath they. Respite, respite, and neither for the memories of Eleanor. Quoth and quoth this kind of, and forgot this lost Lenore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Pros- prospect, said I, thing of evil prospect, still if bird or devil, whether tempest or sent or whether tempest tossed thee here ashore, desolate yet unhaunted on the desert land, un- enchanted on the home by horror haunted. Tell me truly, I implore, is there, is there a bamangi? Tell me, tell me, I implore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Prohet, said I, thing of evil, prosep, still is bird or devil, by heaven that bends us above, from the god of who both adore. Tell this soul with sorrow laden, if within the distant Aden I shall clasp the maiden whom angels name Lenore. Clasp a rare and radiant girl whom angels name Lenore. Quote the raven, nevermore. By the word of the sign in parting bird or fiend, I shrieked. He's unstarting, get thee back into the tempest and the night's platoni shore. Leave no black plume as a token of a lie at thou shall haven spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken. Quit the bust above my door. Take thy beak from out my heart and take thy from off my door. Quoth the raven, nevermore. And the raven never flittered, still stitting, still stitting on the pallet bust of palace above my chamber door. And his eyes have all seeming of demons that dreaming, and the lamp o him steaming through my his shadow on the floor, and my soul from out of the shadow lie floating on the floor, shall be lifted nevermore.